The scythe as a weapon. When I'm mowing in places where people may pass, I'm always very cautious as the scythe has connotations of being a dangerous weapon. The media portrays as such with films of peasants revolting, brandishing scythes or pitchforks. The images of a grim reaper reaping in the souls of the deceased using a long black scythe. To games such as Dungeons and Dragons, where you can pick a scythe as your weapon of choice to go against your foes. I've even been to a reenactment when I was younger, where there were two people with daggers going against one person with a scythe. And the person with a scythe was only taken down after he had killed one of those two people with daggers. But how likely is this? Is the scythe a dangerous weapon? Or is that all a work of fiction? In today's video, I'll be sharing my experience of using a scythe to explore whether it could be an effective weapon. Let's start by looking at how a scythe is used for its primary purposes of mowing grass, reaping in for crops and cutting back foliage. This is my scythe and it's a modern Austrian scythe and I've got a ditch blade on it. So there's two main parts to a scythe. First of all is the snaff, the wooden section which is made up of a straight wooden shaft and two wooden handles. And then there's the blade section. The blade is made up of a, a tang, which is this section here, which connects onto the snaff. So there's a bit jutting out. And then you have a thick metal bit at the top called a rib, which gives the blade structure and strength. Some blades, like this one, will have a stone tip, which helps protect the blade if you hit a hard object, such as a stone. And then you have the sharp cutting edge, which goes from the toe, this area here by the tip, over to the heel by the tang. And when someone is mowing, they mow across, so the grass passes from the toe to the heel. First thing you'll notice is that the blade is facing the mower. This makes it safer, so you're less likely to hit other people. It's also good for just gathering in the grass so you can cut it. The blade, when you are mowing, will be on the floor. So it's not up in the air where you may hit people easily. It's there on the floor where the grass is, which you're mowing. The blade remains equidistant from you. You just rotate your hips. This makes it very safe that you're unlikely to hit yourself. And in fact, many people will mow in sandals or even barefoot. The blade itself is made of, of a very soft steel, which means that you can use a whetstone to sharpen it. It drags that metal down and puts it into a very fine point. This does make the blade quite weak, and that's why some blades will have a stone spike on, so that if you do hit something hard, you won't crack that sharp edge. So we've seen that when a scythe is used for its primary purpose. This is a safe tool. But what happens if someone started waving it around? Would it be an effective weapon? Well, in my opinion, no, it wouldn't be. Firstly, the blade is facing towards the scyther, or the, the, the wielder, I suppose, in that case. It's not facing your opponent. So first of all, you'd have to crook your scythe um, to make it so that it is facing probably like up there, out straight up instead of at this right angle, which would then make it no longer a scythe. If you didn't do that, then you've got this, first of all, very, you've got balance on your scythe around here, close to the blade. So if you wanted to wield it well, you need your hand right up. It'd be very difficult to wield it here. I can barely hold that. The next main issue, is the strength of the blade. 
The blade is made out of very soft metal, which is great for sharpening. It means you can get a very sharp point on it. However, this is not going to be good for cutting into people. It's fine for cutting into fleshy plants when you sharpen it every five minutes. But if you to go through a person, yes, it'd probably go through their flesh, okay? And I've cut myself on the side before with sharpening. But it's unlikely to go through bone and it'd probably just break the blade at that point. And the last issue with it is this is someone's livelihood. The last thing they're going to want to do is to use it as a weapon. This keeps them alive, it gets their food in, it means that they can feed their cattle by cutting grass as food for them. And it also means they can bring in their crops if they've got things like wheat which they're growing. It's not a tool which they're going to want to damage. There are much better alternatives you can use, for example, a pitchfork. I've had a friend who's accidentally stabbed himself with a pitchfork and it went right through his boot and through his foot. So these are sharp enough, if, particularly if you did sharpen for points more, to be a good weapon. And you can have a longer stick than this and get have it as a good reach. A lot better balance than the scythe. You could alternatively have a knife, you could have a bill hook. If you had this on a, a pole, then you can then use it as a reach weapon, you can slice down on people, and you can also hook the shields out for way to help your comrades to attack them. Oh, but even better than that, you could just sharpen a stick. You could get a wood such as ash, which you've coppiced, to get a nice straight pole. Thousands of people through history have died just because of sharp pointy sticks. So in conclusion, I don't think a scythe is a weapon. I don't think it ever could be a weapon or ever would have been used as a weapon. The scythe is a tool which is very important to a farmer and they're not going to want to damage it. And there's so many better tools, cheaper tools, easier tools that they can use instead or just sharpen a pointy stick. When I was planning this video, I did have a look for a few references of where scythes have been used as weapons. I found a reference to a scytheman, which is a person who had a weapon which looked like a scythe. It wasn't a scythe itself, it was probably more like a halberd. There's also references of peasants adapting their old scythes as weapons. At this point I would count it as no longer being a scythe. They've deformed it, changed the angle of a blade to now make it into a shape which is more like a weapon. A bit like if you stuck a knife on the end of a stick, you wouldn't still call it a knife, it's now a spear. The third one I found was a reference to a German civil servant. This civil servant was particularly interested in martial arts and he used a lot of money, not his own money as well, it was a, got, got by embezzlement in the end, but he used a lot of money to look into ways that different items could be used as weapons. A bit like modern wrestling where they would use a chair to hit someone over the head. But he made a whole book about how different weapons could be used and one of the weapons he looked at was uh, the tool of a, a scythe. He got people to fight with a scythe and formed a book of the best moves of how to attack with a scythe, at least in a wrestling style. If you're interested in that, there is videos on YouTube about people fighting in this manner. Have a look and see if you think that looks like a realistic fighting approach. In my opinion, it's people with a very large weapon getting very close, which tends not to happen. If you're very close, you just use a short weapon, like a dagger or just a, an ordinary knife. Uh, but it's a really interesting video. Go and, go and look at it and see well, how they entertain themselves in the 1500s. Thank you very much. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button to show me that this is content that you like and I can make similar content in future. Also hit the subscribe button to see upcoming content or look at my channel. I've got videos on how I bought a field as an ecological project to help build up the biodiversity of the area and I use it as a hobby to do things like learning to scythe. <laughs>